Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak at the second Geneva Summit for Human Rights, Terrorists, and Democracy. Actually, today we have already heard about former political prisoner experiences. Also, I'm really sorry for North Korea and also Cuba and other like the China or many uh, dictatorship countries. What I see is under the dictatorship, everybody suffer like this. Also, Burma is also one of the dictatorship and one of the worst country. So therefore, we suffer the same. So very simply, to be arrested in our society like dictatorship countries, very easy speaking the truth. Because, lady, we cannot see rule of law. There is a problem in those societies. In Burma also, we, we do not see any rule of law. At the time, anyone can be arrested at any time. Just like the uh, also Secretary of the Geneva Summit requested me to talk about my experiences a little bit. So therefore, first, uh, for part one, I will speak about my experiences a little. But like in 1988, I was a university student. I did not have political background. I did not know what is politics or because before 1988, we have never heard of democracy and human rights. Even the words democracy and human rights, we did not know. <clears throat> Even though I was a university, university student. But in the meanwhile, many students were killed during the university compound. So that is like the eyewitness for that. So when I saw such kind of key brutal killing to students, even though I was not key, but at the time I really wanted to, want, I really want the truth. Therefore, we demanded the government to say the truth to solve the problem peacefully. We did not have student union because all the unions are illegal in Burma. Because all the dictatorship, they know the power of civil, uh, civil, civil society, the role of the civil society. Therefore, as soon as they got in power, the first thing they did was to dynamite the student union building, including students in, in, the, in the building. This is the first thing they did. In our time, we understood that there, if there is no student union, there is no the civil society, we cannot develop, we cannot be peaceful, we cannot have rule of law. Therefore, in our time, we reestablished ourselves, even though we were not recognized as legal organization. We cannot register. We did ourselves. <clears throat> as a result of that, I was arrested. I led a demonstration calling for the release of all students detainees who are in prison. Then to recognize our student union as legal organization. Just only simple thing I did. Because of that, I was ar arrested and given to three years. I did not have a lawyer. Just only military martial court. Military officer asked one question. Did I commit a crime? I replied that absolutely no. Then he, re he replied that three years imprisonment would hurt labor. That's all. Finish the trial. Then I was placed in the total isolation. 23 hours and 40 minutes. I had to stay in the tiny cell. Just only 20 minutes, I had to go outside. So I had nothing to do. But I never, feel, I never felt depressed. When I was alone in the tiny cell, I walked inside the room. Then I made a decision to study my English lesson. Before I was arrested, <clears throat> I could not speak English. So then in prison, I had plenty of time, but the problem is I had no facility, I had no teachers. But I was very lucky. The next two room was placed by a professor. He could speak English, French, uh, English, Chinese, and Japanese. Therefore, when the prison guard was away, I requested him to speak out one sentence or two sentences. Then he, sp he spoke out one sentence or two sentences, then I wrote down on the concrete, then I memorized. So that's the way I could study my English lesson when I was in prison for three years. I was very lucky because military region arrested not only students, but also professors and other teachers. Therefore, I got a chance. Then even though I was released from prison for the first time, then I was rearrested again for another time. So at that time, I did not do anything or they did not show any evidence, but they offered me to be an informer for them. 
At that time, I, I demanded just only two points. One is to release all political prisoners. Second is to enter dialogue with our leader, Dong San Suji, who is a Nobel Peace Prize winner in 1991, who is there in a house arrest. But at that time, they replied that they cannot, they cannot agree for my, for my demand. At that time, I had no other ways to say, I said, I replied that no, I could not join with you because you did not keep promise. Because like the, after 1988 demonstration, they, they gave a promise to hold an election. So we participated in the election in 1990. Our, uh, our leader, so a National League for Democracy Party led by Dong San Suu Kyi, her party won landslide victory. When we won, so they did not transfer the power to the winning party. Before the election, they have already gave a promise. After the election, they will transfer the power to the winning party. Since 1992 until now, they did not, they did not transfer, transfer the power to the winning party. At that time, we tried to, uh, after I was released, we continue demanding to transfer the power to the winning party and then to allow like, the freedom. But unfortunately, they did not allow and I was arrested again because at that time, they, they said, three years imprisonment is not enough for me. I could not take less than from three years imprisonment. Therefore, they provided me another five years imprisonment. So that's the way that I was uh, re-arrested again in prison. Even though I was in prison, I did not feel depressed and continued my studying. Even though I was not allowed to read to write study, I'm trying to pursue prison guards to smuggle in one pages of dictionary. Then prison guards finally anchored pursue rate prison guards. He smuggled in one pages of dictionary. Then I memorized. After that, I ate it. That's the way I ate a lot of dictionary when I was in prison. So that is one thing. That is lucky because they want me to be uh, to be dull. They don't want they don't want me to keep my physical. They want they want me they want to keep my intellectual thinking. That is the worst kind of psychological torture. What I want to say is, so but I tried my best not to be. Not to, not to be killed by the military regime and dictatorship. I'm trying to survive. I'm trying to continue my studying. That's the way I, I am very lucky. But not many other political prisoners are not lucky like me. Many of my friends, they died in prison because of torture, because of starvation. And then some people are suffering from mental, mental illness and mental problems. So because like the prison trying to, trying to rob your dignity and Prison trying to kill you, you are, at least like your intellectual killing. That is like the prison trying. So, but in our time, like the, we train our best. But if we cannot change the political system, we cannot stop such kind of torture, such kind of like the brutal treatment. So that is the problem. So that is like the, just only we cannot do ourselves. We need to do with, we need like the international community help. So that is really important for the time being. But now, <clears throat> just only like the prison system. Another thing is freedom in Burma. You know, like the, in Burma, one mobile telephone is one thousand, nearly two thousand dollar. But you cannot buy it easily if you have money. Even though you have money, you cannot buy it easily. That is Burma. Internet is very uh, worse than other countries. So you cannot use like the internet freely, just only you can use intranet, just with sensor. So then like the, all the internet cafes are watched uh, by the military intelligence or their informers. Therefore, people cannot use uh, internet very freely, cannot visit uh, many websites. So if like the people in Burma, if they visited our website, they will be charged under the electronic act and, uh, and they will be given at least 15 years. So now like the data, 2,100, more than 2,100 political prisoners in Burma. They were transferred to the uh, remote area, very far away from their family. They did not receive proper medical treatment. Therefore, 143 political prisoners died in prison since 1988 to until now. Now, more than 200 political prisoners are suffering from serious problems, but they did not have like the uh, proper medical treatments. 
starvation is very common. Also, for, for the time being, uh, there is no, in some prison, there is no prison hospitals and then prison doctors, no like the medication. Therefore, uh, prisoners were injected one sure and needle for many people. That's the way prison contributed HIV and other tuberculosis and malaria, so other, uh, <coughs> other diseases. The, and then, like the journalists, uh, enemy of the state. That is, like the dictatorship regarded journalists. Very recently, many journalists were arrested because, like, the, they're trying to make an interview with some monks, and then they're trying to smuggle out those uh, video footage to outside. Because of that, like, the, they were given to 26 years. Even, like, the students were given to uh, 140 years because like, they're trying to do the demonstration and then distribute a leaflet. Just the way they did was very simple, just freedom of assembly, or freedom of distribution, freedom of opinion. So there is no, like the dictatorship in Burma did not tolerate for that. Also now they are trying to hold an election in 2010. But like the, we are saying, many leaders are in prison. Without the release of those leaders, that, that election will, be, will not be credible. So we will not regard that election as credible election or the election will produce positive results. So th that election will produce more like the problems in Burma. Now, <coughs> so therefore we are trying to encourage like the European Union leaders not to recognize upcoming election. So without the, without the release of all political prisoners, and then to review constitution, and, and then to help not to do the political dialogue between military regime and our leader, Don San Suu Kyi, and ethnic minorities. So uh, because of the time uh, limitation, I would like to stop this. Then if you have any question, later, we can talk later more. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you both for your testimony of, uh, of your story and also you, you pose a good point uh, concerning the, the next elections and what uh, can the international community of people who cares for human rights uh, do to try to help uh, um, Burma move in the right direction. And I think this could be also some part of the ideas we can exchange in the, 